Hello, my darling students. This is Miss Jenkins, and I am here to walk you through how to create a kaleidoscope color wheel. Looks fun, right? So you guys know your color theory. So this is, you know, a sort of, I don't know, a forward thinking view on a traditional color wheel. So it's just a little bit more elevated than your actual color wheel. As you can see, we're using shades and tints of the colors within the sections of the color wheel to create sort of a kaleidoscope effect. All right, so let's talk about materials. You want a square piece of paper, okay? So whenever you have a rectangle piece of paper, and just to give you an idea for the size, if you have just regular paper that's, um, you know, lengthwise like this, it's a rectangle, like nine by 12 or eight and a half by 11, the way to create your square is to just simply fold it over like this so that that's matching over here and then when you crease it down this is what you end up cutting off so that's how you can get like a perfect square um, once you have that you're also going to need scissors obviously to cut it with you're gonna need a pencil and eraser you're gonna need a ruler um, you will need possibly three different kinds of colors, kind of whatever you have. So if you have crayons, find those. If you have color pencils, go ahead and get those. If you have watercolor, you can also get those. Um, the reason I'm saying you probably want to have more than one type of material for actually applying color is because you may not have a bunch of different oranges in your watercolor. You know, you may not have a bunch of different shades and tints of colors um, to create that within the section. So if you kind of have a mixture of materials, it's gonna work out for you. I did color pencils on mine, but that's because I have a set of like 150 color pencils. And so there are so many shades and tints of the different colors. And then you can also mix colors, right? Like you can layer colors on top of colors to create new colors. Okay, so um, we're going to take our square paper and we're going to fold it so that it becomes a triangle like this. And then we're gonna open it back up. And then we're gonna turn it so that it is a diamond. And then we're gonna fold it again into a triangle. So that now we have a square paper that has sort of an X fold through it, okay? Now, the other thing you're going to need is you need something circular that will fit, my square paper is nine inches by nine inches, but you can, um, you know, you can go a little bigger if you want to, but I would, I would say don't go any less than eight inches by eight inches. Um, so if you have a plate or a bowl, or in my case, I, what I have lying around right now is I have a protractor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my protractor to actually create my circle but you can simply trace a plate or a bowl or a lid to something if it's big enough, okay? So if I were to take two protractors next to each other, that does not really make a circle. It kind of makes it a little bit less circle. So the way you wanna think about it, if you're using something that's a half circle is you bring it in there and you might not be all the way out like this. You might kind of go in just a little bit to kind of help create more of a circle and then you're ultimately gonna do that. Now this will go a lot faster and easier for you if you already have something that is circular around. Okay, the next thing you're gonna want to do is um, you're going to want to break up these three sections that we have here into these four sections into three pieces in each section. So to begin, you're gonna draw your line in the circle right on top of those creases that we already folded, okay? So right on top of those creases so that you end up having, you know, this X or a plus sign in your circle. And then you're just going to I, just use your, you know, it's always good to like stand above your artwork sometimes when you're trying to get, you know, measurements to kind of look even. So we wanna turn this big pizza slice into three pizza slices. So usually I just eye it and I'm like, okay. I put a little mark here and a little mark there. And when I kind of compare the three spaces, if you wanna be totally nerdy, you can use a ruler and actually measure the sections, but you don't really have to. You just want them to be close enough to being the same size. And to make three sections, you would put two marks. 
So again, I'll do it right here and right here and on this side here. And I'm spinning my paper around to work for me rather than hurting my wrist. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to make sure that all of my line, all of my marks, I make straight lines that go right into the center right here. Okay. So here I've got my little shorter ruler here, which is pretty good for this part. So there's one there. And every time I move it, I want to make sure it's hitting my mark and also hitting the center area where I just kind of put that dot where the lines where your original lines converge or meet. So this is what you're gonna do. Come around, do this in all the sections. And if you did this correctly and you put two marks in each of the four pizza slices, you'll end up with 12 sections, which is what we need for our color wheel. Uh, okay, and one more. So it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Mine is not perfect, but it's close enough for what we wanna do. All right, once you have this done, you can begin to add your uh, patterns or designs within the spaces. So I just picked sort of a geometric style theme to kind of create my kaleidoscope effect. So basically what I did is I said, I kind of decided that what I was gonna do in one pizza slice, I'm gonna do in the next and the next and the next and then on around and around. So you can follow along with me or you can kind of do your own thing depending on um, what your interests are. But I always like to start from the inside most area and I'm going to create this pointed shape or like an upside down V in each, in each of my sections like this. And notice I'm spinning my paper around as I do this because I really want to ensure that I try to be as even and balanced as possible. And the only way to do that is to spin your paper around. Do you see what I'm doing? Yep, that's how you do it. All right, so then I'm going to make the decision to, again, what I do here, I'm gonna repeat over and over and over again. So where this point is, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line that goes there and a line that goes there. Now, if you can't do a straight line free-handed like I just did, then you will not be doing that without a ruler. You want to use your ruler. So again, don't be confused by looking at the whole thing. Just treat each triangle as its own separate little section. So I did that here twice. Now I'm going to do it here twice, always starting at this point going over here to this edge. Okay. Use a ruler to make your line straight if you need to. That's probably most people. Okay. Miss Jenkins has been doing this for years and I still don't have perfectly straight lines. So point, edge, edge, point and I'm basically doing the same thing in each triangle and we, we really do want this to be as uniform as possible um, <clears throat> so that it really does have that kind of kaleidoscope radial symmetry effect okay so going through Okay, so now I have that. Um, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna add something different this time. I'm gonna go around and add a diagonal line like that and a diagonal line like that. And I'll do that in each of those triangles that are there. Again, spin your paper around so you get as much accuracy as possible. Again, use a ruler if need be to get those straight lines. And I did something at the beginning that I'm not very happy with, so I'll show you in a minute how I'm going to adjust that when I get back to that area. But as, as I've always told you guys, adjust before you erase. Adjust before you erase. 
It's real important that you get used to that because that's how you get better at art. So over here, I started with my X's kind of down below, and then I decided that I kind of like the star effect I'm getting. So I'm going to adjust these lines here to be like my others that are going all the way to the outer edge here, okay? Once I've done that, then I can go ahead and erase my mistake lines. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here because this is the other one that I wasn't really happy with going all the way. And now I can erase the messed up part. Okay, so I am pretty satisfied with this. It's different from what I did here, but I still kept the same idea of repeating the same pattern within each, each piece as I spin it, as I turn it. Once you have this done, you can go ahead and label your color wheel, okay? So if we start at the very top here, um, if you turn your color wheel to a diamond, um, so that you are you know, diamond shaped paper, right here, you can start with red. And after red would be red, orange. After red, orange, we go to orange. Some of you have the color wheel memorized, which is great. After orange is yellow, orange. After yellow, orange, we have yellow. After yellow, we have yellow, green. After yellow, green, we have green. It's interesting how I'm switching between lowercase and uppercase letters. You ever wonder why you do the things you do? I don't know why. Anyway, it's fine. As long as you can read, as long as you understand the color wheel. Green and then green blue is next. And then up here would be blue. And up here would be blue, violet. And up here would be violet. And next to the red would be red, violet. So once you have it labeled, you can start to add your colors. So if we begin with red, and you wanna do shades and tints of red, you're gonna pick as many colors as you can find that include red. So red orange would count, red would count, darker red would count, any pink you have would also count. So I've got these color pencils, but if I didn't have all these colors, I would bring in some markers, I would bring in some crayons if I needed to, to try to get as many different reds as I could find. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm sticking with the slice that I want, okay? So I wanna make sure that I can see very clearly the difference between each space, right? So this is one triangle here, which is the red one. So I'm gonna go in here and start adding my colors. And you can sort of outline a section. So you can do this with watercolor or color pencil or crayons or all of the above. And I usually wanna get a variety in there, but I typically end up repeating a color at least once within the space because I'm able, um, you know, I don't usually have as many of the color that I need, as many as the shapes that are present in, in that specific piece. Um, so there's that, and all of these count as shades and tints of red because they are red with something mixed into them to make them a little bit darker. So this is magenta, which is a little bit less, it's a little bit more pink, a little bit less red. But pink comes from red, and then if you wanted add a different red. You can do that here. And if you do this with watercolor, you want to make sure your paper is nice and thick and that it can withstand um, water going through it. 
So it needs to be thicker. Um, otherwise, you might have your paper could tear really easily. So there is red. So my red one's done. Now I'm gonna move to red orange. So can I keep some of the colors that I have here to make the red orange section? Absolutely, because I have this red orange color right here, which I can use. I'll go ahead and put all the other colors back where they belong. And then I'm gonna pick some oranges and some reds that look like they have, you know, some um, more orange in them and, and red mixed together. So I've got an orange here. I've got a red orange and orange. And what else can I use? I think if you found something like a burnt orange, so like a like a sienna brown color, you could also work as a red orange or like a terracotta color. So that's what you would then do for red orange. So I'm gonna come in here and outline my section and then fill it in. And remember, you can mix colors together. So on top of that sort of brownish orange, I'm gonna add some of this red orange color and put it in there. And then I'm gonna do a different orange here. So red orange is gonna be more, like it's gonna have deeper reds in it than the yellows. So you're gonna see, you're not gonna see any light oranges. You're gonna see a lot of, um, a lot more red in there. Like the red's gonna stand out. Okay, so I wanna lighten this up a little bit, make it a little bit more orangey. So I'm gonna go like that. And then for this orange, I'm gonna come down here. So as you can see, the space does um, share some similarities to our red section, right? And again, what I'm using right now is an orange color, but to make it more red orange, I'm going to add a second color on top of it to mix it a little bit to give it a little bit more red orange. But then it'll be, you know, just another, another shade or tint of color within the space. Okay, so you guys can see what you're going to do. You can see how the red going to red orange changes and then are some of the colors that you have in red orange gonna also be in orange? Absolutely, so like this orange and this orange can definitely be part of the orange. And then you can go over to your oranges and find some slightly lighter versions of those colors as well. And then you have those different shades that are a little bit more in between um, the yellow and the orange. So it's not more red and it's not more yellow. It's like kind of an orange. Okay, so you're going to finish filling this out with your colors, trying to get as many different shades and tints as possible. And then you'll end up with something glorious that looks like this. If you decide to cut it out, that is fine. But, it, but then if you do cut it out, I would want you to glue it on to another piece of paper. Like I think this would look really nice on black paper. So if you decide to do that, then you just need to relabel on the black paper using um, a white you know, piece of chalk or a white uh, marker, whatever you can find that would actually, or a colored, a colored color pencil would probably work also if it's brighter. Okay, so this is what you're doing. I'm super excited to see what you guys accomplish. Um, I love what I'm seeing so far. I've been so impressed and so proud of your, um, your commitment to what you're doing. All right, my loves, I will see you soon. I hope, have fun, enjoy yourself, and try to relax when you're working on this. Okay, bye-bye, everybody.